thank you all for joining us. This is just uh, an absolute treat. This is a, a kind of a first in a free form Zoom exercise that we've done. I'd much be rather having wonderful pasta and pizza at Victorio's than sitting here in my dining room, giving you a view of my living room. But uh, it is what it is, and uh, all of you have done a lot to help keep this group together, and all the rest of us appreciate it very much. Oh, <laughs> I'm actually not retired, <laughs> so I hope you'll keep me in the group. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, I'm, absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I've, I've been working my business, and some of it I'm able to do from home thanks to Zoom. Uh, we do videos for attorneys about their cases so that they can show those videos at mediation and try to get a better settlement. So some have been done by Zoom. I don't find it quite as effective, but if the clients are happy, you know, we'll, we'll do them. They're Dateline style videos. I've been trying to learn French and I'll tell you one way I keep saying is meeting once a day for one hour with a neighbor outside mm. and we seriously we do this religiously even if we have nothing to talk about we will just sit there uh it's human contact and i found that i live alone uh so i found that to be the best you know at, at just keeping that connection and we both talk about how much it's really helped us just to make it through this um and that's really all of the those are the highlights i guess you know i've the house is much cleaner than it's ever been. <laughs> I can tell you that. Uh, I, I don't think I'll ever go back to shopping in grocery stores. Thank you, Whole Foods and Amazon delivery. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's really it. Oh, yes. I went back onto social media um, to talk to all the other people who are going insane, uh, being stuck in quarantine. And that's also helped a lot just to hear from a lot of you know, a lot of old friends, basically. But um, that's really what I'm doing. Oh, I, oh, wait, one last thing. I've watched pretty much everything on Amazon Prime. Ah, and there's some goodies <laughs> on there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, like, like most everybody, I uh, have been housebound, by and large. And uh, this is actually one of my better moments. And uh, being out and, and seeing a lot of you guys who otherwise uh, I would not have bumped into. And uh, we've not been terrible, haven't done a lot of shooting, but do plan to do some. We've, we've, we're booked for a uh, week long shoot up in Yosemite that ought to be interesting. And uh, other than that, like most of you, uh, hanging out, doing a lot of reading watching uh, a bunch of movies and, and uh, trying to stay out of trouble. I've pulled out three, uh, all, most of those to try. Staying out of trouble has been a bigger issue. <laughs> I did three stories in the past year for Spectrum Cable News One, and they were all outdoors. They were a lot of fun. And uh, that's pretty much uh, the journalism I've been doing. I'm now trying to set up uh, a situation in my house where I can do audio from my mm -hmm. home office. And uh, I'm just thinking about doing that. In fact, I asked Art Yelin if I could do that safely with someone who hasn't received the vaccine. And he gave me some pretty interesting answers. So that's about it. Playing a lot of golf, working out. And uh, that's about it. Well, thank you. Uh Bob, and thank you for putting this uh, together. As Dan said, it's uh, really great seeing people, <laughs> you know, different people and, and even, even this way. Sherry, Jeffy, and I do a weekly podcast called Inside Golden State Politics, and uh, it's produced and directed by Nancy Boyarski, uh, my spouse. And we do it uh, from our homes. Uh, Sherry is does it from her home on her home computer and I do it here in my, at my place. And uh, when we have a guest, the guest will do it uh, from her or his place. It's complicated to put together and uh, could not have been done without Nancy Boyarski's 
um, great computer skills. I mean, she is a genius because every week something is different and goes wrong, but, uh, but she puts it together and we, we, we do it every week. We enjoy it a lot. We have, uh, it's fun. The, uh, we try to maintain the spirit of uh, two friends sitting in a bar talking politics and we keep it informal. Uh, we don't rehearse it. Uh, we just have general topics. Uh, we argue, uh, we exchange, we joke, we argue, we have a really a good time. And uh, so <laughs> it, uh, it, it's, it's really, a, really a great part of, uh, of our lives, I think. In past 90, I haven't been up to a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But I pretty much do whatever I want. Uh, I've got a wonderful <laughs> who takes great care of me. And that's about it. Kitty, what you been up to? Uh, I have been isolating at home. I'm never bored. I am astonished at people who find boredom. But then my husband says, I'm intense. I'm passionate. I talk way too fast and I don't understand how you don't run out of things to do. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. yeah. I had my first COVID shot last week. <laughs> the only side effect I had, it was Moderna was a slight headache. Mm. That's my report. Well, uh, tell us about your life. It's wonderful to see you. Well, as, it, as you can see, I'm teaching class at UCLA extension. Yeah. I'm doing Zoom for the first time, so I, it was very concerning in the beginning, but it turned out to be much better than I thought it would be. So it actually worked out much, much better than I thought. What, what, is, uh, what uh, extension classes are you teaching? Broadcast news, reporting, and writing. Okay. So if you're doing that on a virtual basis, how do you yes. employ any kind of practical exercise for these people to learn? Uh, well, I can show them little, I can show tapes when I share the screen. And I can bring in, uh, like uh, my last class, I brought in one of my ex-students to, to uh, speak to them. So that was a good, you know, that worked out well. I love Zoom. I'm on Zoom about 70 hours a week, it seems, because students want to have private Zoom classes. But I teach three and a half hours <laughs> Monday night and Tuesday. And the rule for Zoom is keep everybody muted. Otherwise, you get people who don't even know what they're doing, dogs barking, laughing, talking. So everybody should be on mute. And then you can call and you can mute everybody, Bob. Joe, what courses are you teaching now? Well, I'm finishing up my 53rd year consecutive teaching at USC Annenberg. Wow. And I'm teaching on Zoom because I don't have those goddamn 90 minute rush hour drives into the campus. And Zoom is great because if you're at my age and I'm 81, uh, you tend to forget names sometimes. And what's wonderful on this is you have 40 students in the class and each name is up there. So you, you don't embarrass yourself by just pointing people and say you can talk. The discussions are a big deal. Monday nights, I teach uh, the athlete sports media and popular culture, which we deal with race and sports and gender and sports. And it's really exciting class. And on Tuesday afternoons, I teach my specialty, the image of the journalist and popular culture. And it's it, where we show video. I share the screen a lot with uh, hundreds of hours of video clips for both classes over a period of a year. And so for me, Zoom is a, is a boon. I love Zoom. Uh, up here in Sacramento, <laughs> where I'm located, ah. uh, life continues to fizzle along. Uh, among the fizzles for me, two of my plays, um, mm. because I'm a working playwright, uh, two huh. of my plays that were to have premiered uh, last year have, are both on hold. And uh, that would be my 11th and 12th plays produced. So uh, I still have hopes for that. But in the meantime, I continue to uh, do some, uh, well, sort of teaching. I work at uh, Davis Med School and Davis Vet School <laughs> and uh, by Zoom these days. Uh, for med school, I play difficult patients. And for vet school, I play difficult pet owners uh, and uh, it's a nice paying gig and uh, manages to keep me busy. I do have to throw in something though. 
having gone to high school and college with Pete Noyes, and having been the campaign manager for Pete's campaign running for student body president <laughs> uh, <laughs> with three people running and Pete finished third and said to me, you have never lost a campaign all the way through high school, all the way through college till now, but you didn't do me any good. I, I finished third out of three people. And I said, without me, you would have been fourth out of three. <laughs> that, that's very good. Thanks. Your, your theater plays, um, what size theaters are these performed in? Uh, most of them are about 150 mm -hmm. to 200 people uh, uh, size with a couple of larger ones, but uh you know, and you know, a couple have been done in New York and LA and Washington DC. So congratulations. Well, you know, it's it's something to do and it keeps me busy. And uh it, it was something I started on before I became a journalist and fell back on it afterwards. One of the things that I found interesting about the original shutdown a year ago was that it seemed to be a little easier to take because it was raining for about three weeks or a month. But then after that cleared, it became a little bit uh, more difficult to self-isolate, but uh, we did it. Uh, fortunately, my wife is also retired um, and our two sons are in New York City and one of them is a real uh, internet digger and found when you couldn't get masks and you couldn't get wipes in stores, he was able to find them online and have them shipped to us uh, because uh, other than the helping uh, contribute to the uh, panic buying economy in March a year ago at a Costco. I just never went to any stores again. And we've stayed safe, relatively speaking, by, uh, again, adhering to all of those rules. I take them all very seriously. And um, we, you know, we wear masks outside. Uh, we're very fussy about everything we do. And we've had friends who are fussy about coming over and even sitting out in front of the, at the house <laughs> because they're concerned about it. And uh, we both, my wife is 14 years younger than me. So she just got her, her COVID uh, shots, uh, her second Moderna shot today. And uh, she had the other one a month ago, had to drive down to San Diego County to get it, but got it. I got both of mine through UCLA at the Santa Monica Hospital. I got my second one a couple of days ago. No after effects at all for me so far and none for her so far either. And, uh, you know, I kept in touch with, uh, all, uh, many of you, one way or another, uh, and uh, certainly, um, you know, Steve Scootsy, my fellow San Francisco Peninsula kid, and I have a lot to say to each other on emails. And, and John Marshall had the, this wonderful uh, series of uh, Zoom meetings that finally kind of came to an end, but I, John knows how much I appreciated that. All of these opportunities to be online with you people or, and, and exchange things and hear things, and, and Bob Leon, God, Bob, Bob Leon is 90 plus, and he was with us on Marshalls a few times. Bob and I go way back at KNBC. Enough said, I'll shut up. We're safe, we're doing what we can, and uh, our boys are too, and uh, God bless America. Uh, I, uh, I love to uh, hear about and read the ratings because uh, our, our careers through the years have uh, been important when it comes to uh, ratings and there was a website called programming something i don't even remember the last word but uh, every morning they would print the overnight ratings uh the network ratings and uh about a week ago they disappeared and so i uh, called the uh, guy who wrote the column i said what happened to the ratings and he said well they won't let us print them anymore i said why he said because they're so bad that the networks don't want anybody to know uh what their numbers are now, of course, you can find out, you know, other ways, but uh, it, it's really amazing how uh, how the numbers on the network programming's program ha has dropped off. And I, I don't even want to mention local. The local numbers are the lowest they've ever been. And uh, it's, it's all about streaming now. So, Joel, do you think streaming has had a direct impact on uh, local TV news ratings? 
Oh, absolutely. I, I don't know anybody who's uh, uh, under 40 who watches uh, local news, for example, on television. Bob, it couldn't be doing better, right? Um, it's a gift that keep, just keeps on giving. In bed with broadcasting. I just did a podcast last night with Ken Minyard. Some of you know him. Uh, he and his son have a, a, a podcast site, uh, Minyard and Minyard. It's going to be released tomorrow. It sold thousands of copies, much more than I expected. And uh, you played a pivotal role. You were there at the launch. Joel Tater's in the book. Joe Saltzman is in the book. Uh, and all of you, are, it's great to see everybody. Um, are you? Huh? Where are you? Oh, well, here's the thing. It's, we are in the midst of moving. My wife and I are going behind the orange curtain, finally, and are moving to Newport Beach. And so I'm on my secondary computer in a poorly lit room. Oh, you're referring to the background. Yeah. <laughs> totally fake. Um, I'm, in a little, I'm in a kitchen in Newport Beach, California. Not as lovely as there, but uh, um, so that, that's that situation. Um, so I'm, anyway, this is, uh, the book is, Every week, it's continuing to sell on Amazon. Uh, there he is. Told me to plug it, KenDavisWriter.com or on Amazon. Uh, but so many of you here, it's good to see old friends. And uh, it's been it's you, okay? all about wonderful stories about our business, a lot of LA stories. Uh, I'm in my newsroom at KUSI in San Diego. And uh, it has been quite a challenge, as you can expect, running a, a newsroom through this COVID period. Half of my staff is home, still home. A third of my staff was, um, we laid them off. Everybody else took um, significant uh, monetary cuts so that we could all stay together. You know, we're, a, we're an independent station. We're not affiliated with anybody. Uh, and therefore everybody has to give, um, give it the bank to help out. You know, this has been a really tough time. The guys I work for are basically decide to sort of continue to finance us through a period where there's basically no revenue. You know, you have a few car dealers, a carpet manufacturer, and uh, some guys that fight termites, and they pretty much your advertisers right now. So it's really, really been difficult. The good thing, though, has been, and I think Jeff, I see Jeff Wall down there. How are you doing, Jeff and Christina? Of course. Uh, that uh, we've become global because we use Zoom now on everything that we can talk to John Hopkins, we can talk to somebody in Pakistan, we can talk to people that are uh, being endangered at the Uyghurs in Xinjiang, China. So a little local station like ours, we have an international appeal now, which has really made us better than ever. Uh, we do two interviews an hour, we do nine and a half hours a day. So we're doing over 75 interviews a week uh, on Zoom. And uh, my few reporters, God bless them, they go out there in their mass and they do the rest of the work. But we don't do reporting like the old days anymore. We just, you know, try to capture the community zeitgeist and put that on TV. And that's what we've, what we've been doing. But man, it's exhausting, guys. I'll tell you, you just, you're just, you just never are asleep. You're always awake. You're always helping a young person try to write a piece of script, you know, because the millennials don't have any clue to what um, what's going on? <laughs> you know, like if you say to somebody, uh, even Sinatra, I had a story the other day. You, remember, you guys know New York, of course, Patsy's, the restaurant, great Italian restaurant in Midtown. And they're leaving New York because of what's happened with Cuomo and de Blasio and all that. So I said to one of my writers yesterday, hey, look, you know, um, it's an Italian restaurant. This is what it's called. It's what it's about. She had no idea. I said, Sinatra used to go there. And she looked at me like I was like I was from another planet. And I had to sit there and tell her who the chairman of the board was, who Frank was and why he was meaningful <laughs> to not only Italian Americans, but everybody. And, and so at seven o'clock at night, I'm in my car and I'm going, I had to explain Sinatra to my six o'clock producer. What am I doing in this business anymore? You know, just totally crazy. <laughs> Now, Sorry would you six for that, but that's just like beyond you. And an art, there's no cure for that. There's no vaccine they're going to give me that's going to keep me from being infected by that contagion, which is called ignorance. Thank you. I would like to know whether your six o'clock producer would happen to have ever heard of the gentleman in the big photo right behind you. 
No, most people think it's Humphrey Bogart, not Ed Murray. <laughs> And, and you kind of answered this question, but I'm kind of wondering, and maybe some of the other people who are with us, are how is television news, particularly local market news, going to be changed forever, you think, by what we've been through with the pandemic and the changes that have had to be made just to get the broadcast on the air? Well, I'd, li I'd like to say that, that I think it's a change for the better, but of course, I'm a cranky old man. I don't see it that way. I, I think that the continued, um, you know, movement toward spot news, um, the shootings, the difficulties, the protests are probably, and you look at LA news, you certainly see this. You don't see anything of, of death. You're not even in LA, even really dealing with the, the Newsom recall and the meaning of that. Um, I think we're, we're moving away from news of meaning uh, to, moves, to news that is more like what's on social media. Mm. And I think that's tragic. And I think it's a good reason why one of the other folks said, nobody's watching local news under 40. I mean, I think that's so smart. That's right. And we may never get them back. And I think that's the passing of the torch is to no one. The torch goes, the torch goes into um, you know, the dustbin of history. And what we all on this call used to recognize as the essential quality of a community connected television station to a community and service, I think is dead. And I'm trying to hold on to that here. I think we still do have some of that, but I don't think that there's enough of it. And I think talk to Tegna, Next Star, Sinclair, and all those characters and see what they think about what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. How many years at KUSI for you? I started here in 2003 and I had a hi hiatus for a few years working for Aruba during the Natalie Holiday, Holloway disappearance. But all told, I've been here um, 18 years. And this is, mm. this is year 5 for me in television news. I started in 1971 in Jonesboro, Arkansas. So I, <laughs> I made it to year 50. Uh, knock on wood. Congratulations. Hello to everybody. Um, it's nice to see you. Um, we're here in Playa Vista. Up until a year ago, we were splitting our time between here and an apartment in New York, but we haven't seen the apartment in New York in a year. Um, hopefully at some point this spring, we'll get back there. I still do a little work, do some consulting for the NFL network because it's fun. But outside of that, my, my major aim is to stay healthy, stay safe, stay out of the hospital and stay out of the morgue. <laughs> ah, I, I, I like that. That's a, that's a good way to go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, insult to Bob, the morgue. Bob, what about jail? You left that out. <laughs> Hello, John Marshall. I figure if you do all the others, you've you, you got a pretty good chance of staying out of jail. <laughs> the uh, background you see behind me is what I see on my uh, patio about 20 feet away in Palm Desert, where we live six months out of the year. The other six months we've been at our home in L.A. And uh, I've been as much in, uh, in lockdown as anybody can possibly be. I've been deathly afraid of getting the... Uh, coronavirus uh, could easily be a death sent sentence at my age. But I've still managed to lead, uh, and my wife, a uh, halfway normal life. I'm able to bike uh, around the area here in relative safety. And uh, there are some hiking trails that I go on that are sparsely populated. We watch a lot of uh, TV streaming. We do a lot of streaming. And um, I go once a week to a supermarket. Um, nearby Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. when there's hardly anyone in there, wear masks all the time. And um, so the good news is uh, we both got our second shots uh, this past Thursday. We drove into L.A. And uh, thanks to Bob Tarlow, who tipped us off that Magic Mountain was a good bet. And I just happened to hit it just right when they had some openings. And we got in there, no weights, no lineup. And uh, you know, we had to drive all the way into town, but it was certainly worth it. And uh, I feel greatly relieved and I, I fully agree with what Art is saying, that you still have to be on guard. Uh, nevertheless, um, the corner is, has been turned for us in terms of our personal jeopardy, we feel. Let me jump back to uh, John Fisher for a moment, because he just sent me a message saying that he wanted to uh, say something further about the 
medical professionals that he has encountered uh, during the uh, long treatment of his daughter. Uh, John, you want to jump in? Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Bob. Um, you know, we spent, I spent a, uh, about a week in the hospital before my daughter got ill. Uh, I had a gallbladder attack. So I was at Kaiser and Panorama City where they were at 150% capacity. Then uh, the day I was supposed to have my gallbladder removed, I got bumped in surgery uh, and it was magical because I got up to my room and found out that my daughter was heading to Kaiser's sunset. Uh, so I went straight from Kaiser uh, Panorama City to Kaiser's sunset and spent the next 11 days uh, with her. And I have to tell you that every single doctor, nurse, uh, cleaning people uh, were all, can, when you think about the stress strain that they're going through, the number of people being at 150% capacity, they were all exceptionally patient, giving, caring, and they all had such a wonderful upbeat attitude. It was absolutely amazing. And I uh, continuously complimented them on that and reminded them just how much we appreciated all of them. Uh, we actually had uh, at one point with my daughter, my, my ex-wife and I would spend uh, share of the time. So there was always one of us in the room with her for those 11 days. But they also had a nurse sitting there in the room with her 24 hours a day. So, you know, they did a tremendous job. And the, the strain they're under, you could see that some of them were tired because they were working long hours. But the, uh, the level of joy that they were presenting to the patients was really very special. John, can long, you, go John, ahead. Tell us what happened to her. What, what was she sick with? Uh, I don't want to go into too much of it, but I'll say that uh, the initial um, uh, diagnosis was uh, autoimmune encephalitis, uh, where the, the brain swells. And yes. uh, it, was, it was really very scary at the very beginning. Um, we, didn't, we didn't know what the heck was going on with her. Uh, I just got several texts from my, from my ex saying that Steffi was mm -hmm. acting very strangely and doing weird things. And and I said, you know, take her to Kaiser. And uh, when I got back up into my room for uh, after my surgery didn't happen, I found out that she was actually being admitted. So, um, yeah, it, it was crazy. But, uh, yeah, you know, even even a kid should have the right to medical privacy. So she says she doesn't want to talk about it much. So we don't. But um, but thank you for asking. I really appreciate that. Um, as for me. Uh, as you can see, well, I, I kind of gone back to my roots over the past couple of years. I'm doing photography. That's Waterman Multimedia. Waterman's my middle name. I'm doing uh, real estate photography uh, for, um, for realtors, doing architectural photography and commercial structures. Uh, in addition to teaching at UCLA Extension, I've been teaching a uh, media law and ethics class there. And then with Jeff, we teach uh, broadcast reporting and production. So that matter of fact, uh, I think that one's starting up again. Is it March or April? April. 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 So I, that's what I've been up to. Uh, unfortunately, for so far this year, it's been uh, strictly dealing with uh, medical issues. As a matter of fact, uh, Monday morning is when I finally get to go and get my gallbladder out. So it's just continuing on. It's just been a crazy year wow. so far. Wow. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I, indeed. I'm going to have to go in a little bit. We're doing one of our backyard distant gatherings with my son, uh, daughter-in-law, and our, our first new grandbaby, seven months old now. And Dr. Art Euling, for the first few months, we only saw him through a window, which my, uh, uh, which my doctor recommended, that uh, no one should go near a newborn baby. And we, we, we've been adhering to that very strictly. So um, I am working with English learners. I, I work at a, a elementary school in Pasadena, Norma Coombs Elementary School, and I'm doing reading sessions with English learners. And I'm telling you, virtual learning is something. Uh, sometimes the kids' <laughs> attention span is a nanosecond. They're at the living room table. They're at the dining room table. They're, they're, it, they're sitting on their bed in their bedroom. And you can hear all the ambient noise and you're trying to get their attention and, and, and it's something but um, other things I, I play flute so I'm doing my flute lessons on zoom 
We do concerts on Zoom. Our chamber music uh, group, there are 13 of us we meet on Zoom. Um, the way we do chamber music is that our a conductor uh, sends, uh, emails us the music uh, uh, he, and the beat track, we record it and then he puts it together. So there are, uh, so we have flutes, we have a, a violin and we have a couple of pianists uh, who have, everybody has instruments in their homes and we record it either on the computer or on our cell phones. So that's interesting. And um, my husband Lincoln is still uh, working at CSUN in the journalism department. Let's see, I go for walks. Uh, I walk two or three miles every day. I still do grocery shopping, but I do senior hour at Trader Joe's um, in Pasadena from eight to nine because there's fewer people in there. And, uh, and one last thing, we have a movie group and we still meet. We used to meet over someone's house. Now we meet on Zoom. Um, they send the movie recommendation online. We all watch the movie and then we discuss it every Wednesday night. Very good. So, yeah, we're trying like to keep this. <laughs> I like that. You were talking about Lincoln, Lincoln Harrison, your husband, yeah. who I know very well. Uh -huh. um, he is a brilliant engineer, uh, right. formerly with ABC mm -hmm. Network News, uh, has been at Cal State Northridge for a long time now. Yeah. Uh, he's the studio coordinator. They have an amazing setup at CSUN if you've never been there. How is he able to continue with basically no students uh -huh. there? I know they are do, they are doing a newscast and their their public service show. Okay, the guests are on Zoom. Um, the students are in the studio, socially distant. Mm. Um, uh, some are in another part of the newsroom, but they are managing to do it. Uh, sometimes mm. it's it's a big headache, but they they decided to keep those two things going. Mm. So. Uh... And that's uh, that's, know, uh, that's, that's great of him. That's great leadership that you'd come up with a way of doing that. So yeah, uh, they're I, determined. I, he was you know determined to keep it going. He doesn't go in every day. He goes in about uh, I think about twice a week, and then on the weekend where he can be alone and and tend to the things that need to be fixed or altered in the studio. Um, my wife and I uh, run a, uh, a, um, a business that my father in law started in uh, motion picture lighting. So we are. Uh, we make lenses for, for uh, the motion picture world. And uh, it's been very interesting, a lot of fun. We were unfortunately closed for six months because the industry was down uh, all that time. And uh, we're coming back slowly, but uh, staying as busy as we possibly can. As John mentioned, do we teach a, a UCLA class? Uh, and I, I teach two, he teaches one with me. And we're about to start again in April. And uh, a year ago, uh, we had gotten two weeks notice that we had to learn Zoom and put this whole thing together. So it was quite a challenge, as Reva was mentioning, uh, quite a challenge to, to deal with all the students and the technical side and all that, but somehow it's worked out very well. It's uh, been a lot of fun. And um, one thing that is positive out of this whole pandemic has been uh, we've learned to meet our neighbors. And every week, uh, a group of us here on our cul-de-sac uh, meet in Sherman Oaks here and uh, socially distance outside and uh, we find we have wonderful neighbors. And that just doesn't happen in LA when you drive to work in your car and don't talk to anybody. Mm. So that's been a wonderful uh, offset of this, uh, of this uh, situation that we're all in. Uh, but um, uh, it's been just terrific. So as I said, nice to see everyone. Uh, Jeff, on the, on the lenses, are you talking about lighting lenses or are you talking about motion picture camera lenses? Lighting lenses. So we make like a 25 inch Fresnel, these big lights that are used uh, out on movie sets. So a lot of the stuff has gone to LEDs. A lot of stuff is indoors and has been for the last year or so, particularly a lot of the larger productions are not, not going, but starting to pick up again. I'm still, uh, I've been teaching at, uh, at USC, which I had the same kind of experience that, uh, that uh, Jeff did in that they, uh, we're, they were going to do in-class teaching, and then, you know, with, with about two weeks to go before the semester started, they, uh, they went back to absolutely no one on campus. And so uh, it was the, they, you know, they put us all through this intense uh, Zoom classes, you know, showing us not only how to make the connection, but all the screen sharing. And so we could show videos and examples and everything. And it was a, it was a real uh, learn by fire situation. But in many ways, it was nice and 
um, you know, learning a new technology and making that work. I also miss the the in person class contact, though. Mm-hmm. Um, that that uh, and I'm you know hopeful that will happen. But the the Zoom also allowed me to stay uh, at home and teach from home and only dress from the waist up. So it <laughs> uh, it was uh, it worked out very well. Uh, in our free time, my wife and I uh, mostly have stayed confined at home, but we've also got uh, into a lot of urban exploring uh, into our area. We've, we've gone out and tried to find different areas of Southern California uh, that, that we had never been to. We've gone out to uh, Lake Elsinore and Paris and all through Orange County and uh, going around through there. We drove up to Lancaster and Palmdale and up through uh, Fillmore and Santa Paula and uh, through Santa Barbara and Ventura counties. And we've found a number of different safe venues to go exploring a lot of outdoor botanical gardens where we could uh, walk through uh, fully masked uh, and avoiding the people who weren't masked. And there's still a lot of them out there. I don't understand. They must be reading different literature than we're reading, but, uh, but it's, uh, we found places, you know, have, it's, it's funny having lived here in this area for 73 years, uh, finding places that you didn't know existed and finding little venues and little corners and little pockets of the communities uh, that, we, that we didn't know about. And uh, so it's been really fun in a lot of ways. And uh, that's, that's how we've spent a lot of our time. And of course, watching a lot of TV and having the cocktail hour start earlier sometimes during the day, but, uh, but all in all, it's been really nice and just uh, getting to, uh, to spend some quality time with each other. It, it's been great. Uh, we were talking a lot about Zoom. Uh, Warren mentioned that I had uh, put together an NBC Zoom meeting. Uh, I, I have a weekly Zoom meeting with my uh, pilot friends. And uh, uh, it's the one thing about Zoom, uh, a, a point that hasn't been made yet is the importance of seeing the face of the person yeah. you're you're talking to or, or reacting to. Mm-hmm. You, if you're in the supermarket with a mask on, uh, there's a young lady uh, across the way. You don't know if she's angry at you or if she wants to go home with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's very confusing. But here on Zoom, but here on Zoom, we're able to see. Whether the message is, uh, you know, becoming boring or, uh, you know, it's it's wonderful to see everybody and it's wonderful to have a, uh, a, a crude way of relating uh, to each other. And I think that's why Zoom works. Uh, it, it is as close as we can uh, safely get to uh, human uh, interaction. You're still flying for I, it's, right? it's the one way to get out of the house. It's the ultimate get out of the house. Uh, you go up there about a mile and you, you get your perspective again. You realize, oh, my God, this is a beautiful place uh, we find ourselves in. And uh, you, you, you really want to uh, uh, fly, uh, live to fly another day. It's a great motivator. Uh, it brings uh, jo- so many pilots who have written on the subject to use the word joy. And it's, it's not an exaggeration. Well, I'll start it off with something. Uh, different. My wife and I were on the Golden Princess, the Princess cruise ship where the infected passenger got on in Tokyo. Oh, we wow. got off. We got on. We got off the ship at eight o'clock in the morning on January twentieth, and that person that caused havoc got on in the early afternoon. So we were hours away from being going through hell. Um, I have. Uh, been at home, nothing much has been going on, no live events. So I've kind of looked at uh, Netflix. I've uh, gone through every Israeli show. Now I'm going through Indian shows, Indian movies, and finding there is so much fascinating television around the world. And Netflix and Amazon have done an incredible job of bringing these shows to us. We just watched one on Discovery Plus, which was Race Around the World. And if you, if you have Discovery Plus, go watch it. They go from England to Singapore without flying. And it, it's just 
you know, gives you something to watch for a few hours. Um, and what Lou, what, uh, Lou said earlier was my wife and I are every Friday, we're getting in the car and we're going somewhere just for a drive. We've been to Ojai, we've been to Solvang, we did Montrose, we did Claremont. Uh, just getting out and seeing so many great places in this area that we really never get to go see. One of my coworkers uh, tested positive um, for COVID. And so uh, we were required to, and I obviously called my doctor and he scheduled a test for me. Um, I'm with the Veterans Administration for 100% of my medical and they're just terrific. Anyway, I tested positive uh, on Friday and they, they called me on Saturday. By Tuesday, uh, I was pretty sick. Uh, I could hardly move. Um, I slept almost all day and Tuesday and Wednesday nights, I had like a hundred fever, a uh, little Tylenol solved that, um, whether it worked or not, uh, I, I am on vitamin D, uh, by prescription and I took vitamin C and zinc. And after two or three days, I started feeling better. And, um, luckily I was off work for two weeks and I learned how to, uh, order food, uh, uh, online and got it delivered. And uh, I'm one of the best customers my local Denny's has. We're, we're on a first name basis there at the local Denny's and uh, ordered either there or sit in their tent when it hasn't blown away. Anyway, I spent two weeks off from work. I worked part time at Enterprise Rent-A-Car. They paid me and they were very nice about it. And uh, I survived. I, I assume that's what I had because I was very sick. Uh, I didn't get tested again. I just went back to the VA and my doctor wrote me a note and said, you can go back to work and uh, I've survived. So uh, I can't blame anybody for it. And I survived. I'm happy. <laughs> Hi, I, uh, I've just spent my time primarily trying to make sense of, as a book publicist, trying to make sense of all the changes that have been taking place in the publishing industry not necessarily positive ones, um, that really uh, <clears throat> don't compare to back in the day, uh, as I have described it, when it was fun. When I was working with authors like uh, Bill Boyarsky, like Art Uline, <laughs> all, those, all those decades ago when I would pitch all of my authors to Lou Irwin, and he actually called me back. <laughs> uh, I got to tell you, these days, uh, I could be their mother and they wouldn't call me back. <laughs> so uh, that's pretty much how, how things are going. I've kind of changed my focus into helping um, uh, people uh, produce and promote their new books, uh, among them uh, a former NBA player and uh, two handsome doctors. So I'm pretty happy. George Thank Lewis you. and Judy Muller. Um, yeah. It's wonderful that the two of you have found each other. As we know, Bar Bar Barbara's sitting next to me. Uh, she knows Judy very well, and it, it's it's lovely to uh, to see the two of you. Are you in Colorado? Yes. We are in Colorado, colorful Colorado. And uh, we had snow this morning, and now the sun is out, and it's a beautiful day. And it is, it's so good to see so many colleagues of mine from the Peacock, former colleagues, and in Judy's case from ABC and USC. And uh, we've, uh, we've been trying to keep busy. We did a podcast together. <laughs> we have our home studio too. <laughs> and uh, it was called Science Straight Up and we were interviewing scientists from the Telluride Science Research Center. And we'll probably do that again uh, this coming summer. Judy's working on a book and I'll let her take it from there. Oh. Okay, that was sudden. It's great to see so, <laughs> so many friends. Joe's laughing. Uh, Joe and Lou Rothbart both are my colleagues from USC. I retired from USC a couple of years ago, a word that Joe doesn't understand. Never <laughs> uh, where I was very happy teaching there for almost 15 years, but uh, and then I'm very happy here in Colorado with George, and we're, we're doing a lot of things. I've been writing, working on a book, uh, about a woman I met here who's on lifetime parole for murder. She's fascinating. Um, and it's getting me through the pandemic, <laughs> whether it, 
ever goes anywhere or not. Let's move on to Lou Irwin. Lou, uh, this has been like three times postponed already. Uh, we want to do a, a separate News Geezers program when we're all back together with Lou and his remarkable story. He was the original anchor at KABC TV, as you know, uh, and then went on to be a radio uh, news director at a number of stations here. His name is so well known, and he has a remarkable story to tell. And uh, uh, he, he will he will tell it in person at length at a future lunch. But for now, Lou, tell us what you're up to. Well, before I uh, do that, um, this is the first time that I have seen Leo McElroy in 52 years. Wow. <laughs> um, and uh, I mean, it really is an amazing story because I quit KRLA two days uh, after I hired Leo uh, to do the uh, fill-in uh, uh, news updates for the credibility gap. Uh, and um, <laughs> I mean, this is really amazing. <laughs> 52 years. Uh, wow. Uh, Lou, Leo, it was Lou, great to I see you it. again. I'm, Lou, I'm sorry I, I threw, threw you to the wolves. Yeah, I finally became news director there, Lou, so I followed you. Yes. Yeah. It was. Uh, I mean, this is really amazing. <laughs> My daughter uh, works in the uh, uh, as a uh, what is it, what's, what's your title? Quality assurance supervisor for a video game company. She works out of home, and she's on Zoom every day, talking not only to people uh, in this area, but she's meeting every day with people in Japan and in uh, Scandinavia and God knows where else, but she's on Zoom every single day working with creators of uh, video games, uh, people who are uh, uh, selling the video games, all of that. She works for a company, the, the parent company is Electronic Arts, and they're like the biggest video game uh, company in, in the world. She makes more money that, uh, these days than I ever made in this business. <laughs> Times have changed. It, 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 great to see the two of you have a reunion like this. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> it really is. You know, the, the first time I ever heard you, Lou, was on the air at KPOL. Yes. That was that a great was experience. I mean, that... that, that I started at KPO in 1955. Wow. 21 years old. And uh, yeah, that was uh, a long time ago. I made $115 a week. And uh, I went on to Channel uh, 9. I made another $200 there. Went on to Channel 7, made $265 a week as an anchor. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Lou, we look forward to have you uh, on the on the program when we can. Uh, thanks for being patient. It's all, you know, things that are beyond our control, obviously. I'm looking but, uh, forward to it as well. Good. That, that, that'll be a, a, a fun afternoon. Thanks a lot. Uh, Bob, a, a nice job in bringing all of us and giving us the courage to try this new technology. Uh, as I think it's a new way of life. Yeah. Speaking of new ways of life, I've uh, been playing it safe. Um, I haven't dared go back to the barber shop yet. I'm I'm quarantining from barbers, and uh, you know, like I got a <laughs> got a little wild thing going on here. But uh, <clears throat> I wanted to uh, uh, really reach out to Art and say hello to Art, and uh, because it was at a, at one of the geezers' meetings maybe a couple of years ago where he was there in person. And uh, he told us all about his um, adventures on, on Kilimanjaro, uh, al along with Priscilla. And um, he said he was going to do it one more time before he was 82. And um, I guess those plans got waylaid. Or, or what are your plans for Kilimanjaro now, Art? Well, Dennis, uh, uh, we, we went a second time uh, four years ago, three years ago, uh, 2017. And I am scheduled, it's all booked and confirmed, to reach the summit for the third time. 
on July 13th, 2022. Wow. Uh, next year. Splendid. And, Splendid. And when I do that, not if I do that, I will be able to claim the Guinness World Record as the oldest man to ever do it without oxygen. Some 88-year-old guy went up with oxygen, but uh, I'm going next time for the record without oxygen. And then at the age of 89, I will go up again with oxygen if I need it. Bill Dawson. Uh uh, Bill has, uh, for some years now, been the technical director at uh, our News Geezers luncheons. He's the one who makes everything hum and brings some of his own gear, and I bring some of my own gear, and we lash it together. And Bill's been doing something interesting that's come around mainly because of the pandemic, and it's uh, church streaming, church service streaming. Bill, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm um, running on an old Mac with old software that I got for free. So uh, the fact that the uh, doesn't have a camera is not a big surprise here. Um, That's okay. It doesn't matter. We know okay. what you look like. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, my uh, my wife goes to uh, a, a church in Camarillo, and uh, as all the churches did, they, they weren't meeting anymore. So some went online, and the first time I saw it. They had used an iPad in the back of the room with an insanely large uh, wide shot. And uh, they thought, well, we can hear it with our ears just fine. So the iPad mic's going to hear it just fine as well, right? Yeah, right. It was a disaster like you would expect it to be. So I, I uh, went and, uh, and offered my, my services. And <laughs> it turns out now we've got, yeah, I did not mean to do this, um, but we've got multiple camera feeds coming into a uh, computer. Uh, and the computer is doing all the video switching. It's uh, running all the videos because we record a lot of things off of Zoom and so we'll play them back. Uh, doing all of the graphics. I'm, I'm absolutely amazed that, that this whole control room now we've got into a computer. We're using a, a program called OBS. It's, it's free. I have no idea why, but wow. And uh, I, I started that as a volunteer thing. Everybody else, all their techies left. <laughs> they left. I went, okay. So I was, I was still there. Uh, they, they wound up uh, after a few months uh, deciding they want to keep me around for a while. So they, they pay me now to do that. I'm, I'm not going to tell them no. Um, and that's, that's where we are at, at this point. Uh, oh, uh, we also started... Uh, outside church about a month ago where we're out in the parking lot where we're using a parking lot island with palm trees where I put the pastor and I've got the camera uh, at least camera one pointed uh, towards their altar We've got the monitors out there for the, uh, uh, the congregation that does show up uh, audio gets a little weird in that the grand piano is still in the sanctuary and I need to hear it outside for the singers because the singers are outside so I've got audio going both directions on that one. And I need to do a separate mix for the uh, singers outside, mixing that back into the sanctuary so the piano player can hear it. And then there's the uh, stream, audio for the stream, which is a separate mix. And then Moore Park College decided that they wanted to send some interns over. I went, um, okay. So we're actually doing class over there. So we're, we're streaming live. I like live. I hate tape. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. So we're streaming live. And uh, I'm also teaching the interns at the same time how to, how to do this. So that's my life right now. Still out in Simi Valley? Nope. No, no, actually. You uh, you're... We bailed on California. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Barbara was just telling yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. We bailed on California. We... We are now Utah residents. Ah, what part of Utah? Loving it up here and a salute out to George and Judy in Colorado, my, my neighbors next door. <laughs> so uh, yesterday too. Um, just loving it here in Utah. Very happy to be uh, up here. We we have our grandson, his mommy and daddy, and our other son and my wife's dad living with us. So we have four generations under one household here in a six bedroom house in Syracuse, Utah. Where is that? We're, we're in relation uh, to Denver. 20 miles north of Salt Lake City. Um, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, the Salt Lake City. 20 miles north of Salt Lake City. 
Exactly. So go, yeah. going up toward the Idaho border. We're at exit three three thirty two. Come on up. <laughs> <laughs> Antelope Utah is a beautiful it, state. It's it's a gorge. I mean, I've loved the drive coming up here, and you know, going back down. We were there in Simi Valley for twenty one years. I wanted to give a special shout out to Lou Irwin. Lou, I was a wide eyed young DJ on the central coast of California at a little station in San Luis Obispo in back in 1980. And we used to play your syndicated program called Earth News Radio. You remember <laughs> Earth News that you used to do all those years ago? Absolutely. Anyway, I, I, in 1982, I, I went to work in, in Los Angeles. Uh, I, I went to work in LA at KNX AM, you know, news radio and KNX FM. That's where I got to know Bob's lovely bride, Barbara there. And you, I believe, filled in for one of the news, uh, news producers or news guys there. And I got to meet you there, but I never told you that I was just so thrilled to meet you after playing your syndicated program uh, every night. It was just such an honor to meet you. I didn't really know your background because I couldn't pick up any of the radio stations in LA there on the Central Coast, but it was a pleasure to meet you. I got to meet Casey Kasem also, which was a big honor. Wow. Just a wide-eyed young kid. So going going back a few years there, Lou, I thought I would give you a special hello. Well, thanks. You know, just today, I was uh, looking at eBay and somebody sold a copy of uh, my week-long interview with David Bowie for $37. <laughs> just, I just noticed that today. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty amazing. What, what an amazing career you've had. Uh, everybody here, it's been a real pleasure. I was, uh, I was happy to, I made it to one news geezers meeting to see everybody there, the one with the, uh, uh, the helicopter news stories, really enjoyed it. And here we are, you know, I guess Zoom isn't that bad a way to meet everybody. At least we can stay in touch. And, uh, you know, for those of us that have moved out of the area, this is uh, the next best thing to being there, as they say. Irv, are, are you there? Hello, everybody. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm still in Seal Beach. Uh, totally retired now. Uh, I can't believe it was 09 that I took the buyout from Circle 7. And here it is. So that's what, uh, 09 to 21. It's 11, 12 years now, I think. And uh, I, uh, I've since given up uh, teaching at my last teaching gigs were at Cal State Fullerton. Prior to that was at USC. So I remember working with Lou and Judy was there too, I think, at the same time. So now I'm totally retired, but I stay busy with a number of organizations, uh, church, Navy, uh, veterans groups, uh, uh, some other organizations. And of course, with my media background, I'm automatically the PR guy, the flack now for these organizations writing news releases. And then I do a lot of video editing now on my computer for, for, with the grandkids. And uh, so that keeps me occupied and keeps the mind, I hope, uh, fertile and 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 happy and friendly. I, I was the archive manager over there at 11 and licensing footage and doing everything else. The custodian, yeah, custodian of records, as you know, deals with the subpoenas and stuff. And a custodian of records, this custodian also has to clean things up around there. And that was one of the things that I did. But uh, I was asked by some of the folks in New York, at the mothership, if uh, to assist in a project to digitize the film assets of the station. And, uh, there are quite, quite a few, about one and a half million feet, one and a half million feet of uh, 16 millimeter news film from 1949 up until 78, 79, when they went to uh, the tape acquisition in the field. So it's a lot of stuff, a lot of history, a lot of Los Angeles and Hollywood and all the stuff that, local stations covered back then. And so uh, first I had to track down this film. There were rumors that the stuff had been tossed as so many stations did. But Channel 11 kept everything. They just sent it off to the salt mines for storage. And that's where it's been all these years. 626 cartons, each carton holding between six to eight weeks of news film. Raw footage plus the edited pieces. So I've uh, been kind of working on that. I wanted to take some time off. I retired in November. I did not want to go right back to work. I wanted to take some time off. 
and this, you know, this pandemic got worse than it was supposed to be. So I, all my plans to go fishing and bike riding and all that stuff sort of uh, are on hold. But that's that's the big project that I'm probably going to be involved in for the who knows how long it's going to take forever to do. Basically supervising a crew of people who have to enter the metadata for all of this stuff. You have to recognize, you have to have a sense of Los Angeles history. You have to know about news events that have been covered in this town for all these years. And so it takes some folks with a little experience and they're not going to be 20 year olds who don't know who Frank Sinatra is. And uh, you, you just have to spend time to look at this stuff, put down keywords for digital searches and all that. And that's what I would be doing. And at the same time, I've been asked again to work as a consultant in another couple of projects involving archival footage, uh, news, news material, again, from the Los Angeles area. So that's sort of what I'm, I'm up to. But I also have my own film library of, of footage, industrial stuff, public domain material. And when I worked for KCOP, I used to license that stuff. And, uh, you know, Chris Craft, they didn't care what you did on your own time with your own resources. They didn't care. Fox is a different company. No uh, moonlighting outside of, you know. So I kind of put it on hold, although I did continue to acquire footage. But now that I'm no longer an employee of that company, I've gone back to licensing my own footage, my own stock footage. And so that's a side business that I picked up again. and had to re reset, set up my business again and uh, you know, did all that, which I've done. Yeah. And so slowly getting back into that. And that's basically it. I got my two COVID shots. I had what I got my last one a couple of a few days ago, Thursday. It was a Pfizer shot. And boy, I, I woke up at three in the morning. I felt like I had a hangover and the flu at the same time. It was the worst mm -hmm. thing, but I'm okay. So everything's fine now, but that's, that's it. And um, it's great to hear from everybody here. I just uh, really, you know, tell you, uh, your, your careers are so fascinating. And of course, growing up in Los Angeles, I've uh, watched and listened to so many of you over the years and uh, really uh, value uh, the fact that I've, I've been able to spend 44 years in Los Angeles working in LA because, you know, it's, it's, to me, that was a big deal. Let me try Natalie Windsor. Natalie, uh, she just unmuted her mic. So uh, let's hear from you, Natalie. You know, the, the upside of not having a camera on my computer is that I get to see the names of all the faces because I, we do see each other. Um, if you know me, you know that I'm not a tall, skinny redhead, but just think of me that way. Young, tall, skinny redhead, okay? <laughs> <laughs> on I, 40 years in radio... Uh, I can be that on radio. And uh, <laughs> um, let's see. I know people from KFWB. I know people from, oh, I don't even want to. I was 15 years with Associated Press Radio Network. And uh, I'm still on the board of SPJ, the local board. And so it's just wonderful to be able to reach out and communicate with and hear from uh, all, all of you. Because uh, I have not been working right now. I've been on hiatus. And I've been dealing with some health problems, but I'm on the other side of that. That's in my past, not in my future. And uh, I don't know if you know me, but I am a parachaplain, like a parachaplain, like a paramedic, like a paralegal. It's almost a whole one, not a whole one. But um, sadly, I've done a couple of funerals in this time uh, for people who were under my care. But also, um, I've... It's Parkinson's law. When you say to somebody, call me if you need me, they do. And uh, it doesn't give you a regular schedule. And I'm hungry to go back to work now at some point because I'd like my, I used to resent clocking in. Now I really miss it. I miss the structure. I miss the organization. I see nodding. I see people, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, this is so wonderful. I'm so glad to be part of this. And Art, I think, Art Eulean, I think you and I are neighbors. I think we're on the same next door. Really? Yeah, <laughs> we'll talk. My people will call you people. And, <laughs> um, but it's just, it's wonderful to do this. Thank you, thank you, Bob, for putting this together and keeping us all in touch and keeping us all connected. And uh, God willing, we'll all be uh, tapping each other on the shoulder within the year or within a year. 
and uh, stay safe and well and warm enough at night, everybody. Um, wake up every morning to Sonny and Cher singing I Got You, Babe, on the clock radio. <laughs> 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 um seriously uh covid i've had my shots my wife's had her shots we're good our daughter is good um i don't have anything for the good doctor but i do have a quick anecdotal story uh, something that couldn't happen today but did at the beginning of my career 1969 uh got out of the university of michigan and sent resumes uh to every ad in the back of broadcasting magazine and with no experience outside of college shops and whatnot. And I got hired as a, as a street reporter in Decatur, Illinois. So I drove down there, met with the general manager, and he said, no offense, but your name's too ethnic. So you're now going to be John Gar on the air. Now, today, I would, I would think that would be multiple lawsuits, but Back then, I bit the bullet, and uh, they gave me a 16-millimeter camera, and I went out and shot fires and car crashes, and uh, that was the start of it. And like I said, I don't think that could happen today without a major lawsuit. And uh, Rory, pipe in. You look like you're in a tropical paradise, but I know it's a virtual background. There it is a virtual background, but it actually comes from my place in Cozumel. Oh. But I'm back in Sun Valley, right up the street from Victorio's. Ah, okay. You know how those things go. But anyway, uh, you know, you're always asking what we've been doing. Well, you know, behind the scenes and everything for 40 years, I became an actor. And then people had mentioned about seeing all the Netflix and the Amazon movies. Well, I've been voiceovering those from France, Italy, Spain, and Russia so we could listen to them in the U.S. And it's been one heck of an education on how they actually physically do that. And you don't say the words exactly. It's not verbatim, but it's as to move the story forward. And it really looks like you're actually doing it. And if they have something where you're in a close-up, they will take and have you moving your mouth to say the words that are the same phonetically. So it's astounding. But anyway, with COVID, I had gravitated to an acting coach and a protecting assistant worldwide. And I have over 1500 students. So there is life during COVID. Another thing I thought I would get enough time to be writing my memoirs, which is called More Outtakes and Highlights about my life in the entertainment industry since I started out as a stuntman at nine years old. But I got too busy doing COVID meetings on Zoom with all my students for the last you know, year, year and a quarter. And it's great. The fact that we've been able to do this virtually, first with a political program back in October and now this session today, uh, means that we're all still together. It means a great deal. And so, yes, uh, let's do it again. In the meanwhile, thank you, all of you. Uh, God bless you. Take good care. Stay healthy. Get that vaccine if you haven't already. And be careful. And with any luck, we'll see each other in person before the end of the year.